Hey, my name is Steve Parr. I'm a business lawyer in Vancouver, BC. And today this video is all about how to not get sued. So unfortunately, just like in personal relationships, the persons who are most likely to sue you are the ones who are closest to you and your business. This is a sad but unfortunate reality. So when I'm talking about the people who are in your business, I'm talking about your business partners, your customers, your employees, contractors, your suppliers, and the vendors. So these are all business relationships and they all have the potential to sue you if things go afoul. So uh, there are many, many things that you, steps that you can take to mitigate or prevent the possibility of people suing you. Uh, and the overarching theme of the steps that you can take and this video is clarity. So how do you go about creating clarity inside of those relationships? In a word, you communicate. So you can communicate verbally and you can set meetings and set up uh, times to, to go over all of the details of your business. So the more clarity you have about where you are going in your business and who is going to come on board with you for that journey and what role they are going to take uh, alongside you during that journey, the better your chances are of A, succeeding most importantly, and B, avoiding uh, difficult, difficult disputes and, event and potential litigation. So I'm speaking, unfortunately, from personal experience, I've seen quite a bit of uh, shareholder disputes in, in my days as a business lawyer, and the vast majority of them are situations that could have been avoided if there was more communication between the founders, uh, between the people who created the business right from the get-go. So. On a practical level, one of the steps that you can take uh, is to draft a properly executed shareholders agreement. So uh, in a BC private company or in any Canadian private company, a shareholders agreement, also known as a universal shareholders agreement in some circumstances, is an agreement that sets out all the possible outcomes that might occur during the lifetime of the business. So this is going to cover things like death, disability, uh, what happens if a partner gets divorced? What happens if a partner wants to reduce their involvement in the business or increase it and purchase some of the shares of the other partner? Uh, what happens if they want to bring on another partner and bring in more investment externally? Uh, what happens if the business runs out of cash and then requires further financing from the shareholders themselves? And uh, what happens if the bank is not willing to loan? Um, all of these kinds of situations and circumstances are covered off in a shareholders agreement. And it also covers things like who makes decisions and how, who is going to be elected to the board of directors, uh, what, under what circumstances can a director be removed from their role as a director of the company, um, and what is the threshold for making substantial decisions such as you know, changing the direction of the business, entering into a new vertical, uh, taking out loans, hiring executives, firing executives. Um, all of these kinds of matters are covered off in a shareholders agreement. And so it's an essential, it's basically the constant, it's, it's, a, it's a constituting document of your business. So a shareholders agreement is going to force you to think about things that most people don't want to think about. You know, in a sense, it's a little bit like uh, a will. You know, a lot of people understand that a will is a very important document to, to have, to, to plan for, for the future and for the inevitable outcomes that, uh, that come with being, uh, being on this planet for a short time. But we don't want to think about it because it's uncomfortable. And so a shareholders agreement follows a similar line of thought in that it's, it's something that at its face, we can all understand that this is important, um, but it's difficult to engage with these sorts of questions. So it's really important to have great people around you. It's really good to have people who are, uh, whether they're your lawyer, your accountant, your business coach, a mentor, people who have been there and done that and can help you sort through some of these questions and uh, get you and your partners across the finish line. So that's a very important one to do is to, is to draft uh, an effective shareholders agreement. And uh, the second piece that I would really, really like to emphasize is your corporate structure. So if you are doing a business as a sole proprietorship, or in a general partnership with another person or persons, then you are personally liable for all of the business dealings. So as a sole proprietor, if you go into business, if you have a contract with somebody else and there's a, you breach that contract or you are alleged to have broken that contract, 
then the other party can sue you and sue you personally. And that means that they can come after your personal assets, uh, such as a home or a car or any other personal assets that you might have. So that's a very vulnerable position to be in uh, as a business person. So while incorporation uh, is not the very first step that a lot of business people take, it should be something that is top of your list uh, as your business starts to gain momentum. Incorporation is, can be very beneficial from a tax perspective, but first and foremost, it is a valuable liability shield. So as your business con continues to mature uh, after you are incorporated, then your next step is going to be thinking about, okay, should I get a holding company in place? And the quick, you know, the quick reasons why this is, is important is from a liability perspective, once you have your operating company and and it has a whole bunch of cash in it. So, you know, you're making a profit and say you have $100,000 of excess cash in there um, after all of your operational expenses and your salaries and your the dividends that you're pulling out personally have been paid for, then that $100,000 that's sitting inside of your operating company is vulnerable. It's vulnerable, it's exposed uh, to creditors, to people who are suing the business. So you wanna get the cash out of there so that there's not, there's just very little, there's just the operational, the amount of operational cash that you need inside of the operating, operating company is really all that should be there. So what you do is you set up a holding company, the holding company subscribes for shares in the operating company, and then you can do a dividend from the operating company to the holding company, and then the holding company can hang onto that cash and use it in turn to invest in other assets uh, or just simply hold on to that cash until uh, until a time that you are that you are willing and able to dividend that out to yourself personally um, in consultation with your tax advisor. So uh, that is a very important step to take in terms of uh, minimizing the amount of liability that you might have. So the third piece that I want to cover is insurance. This is not really a legal piece. Uh, you're going to have to speak with an insurance advisor, but I do want to emphasize that getting uh, strong commercial general liability insurance. Uh, or depending on the type of business you're in, perhaps you're a coach or a consultant, so you might want to think about getting errors and emissions insurance. Uh, these types of insurance products are absolutely invaluable because even if you are sued, um, then your insurance may be able to protect you in the event that uh, that the terms of the coverage cover the incident that is uh, that that happened. So, so really think strongly about getting insurance as well. Finally. You're also gonna really wanna think about getting the appropriate contracts in place. So again, this comes back to my first point about clarity. So a shareholders agreement is, is a perfect example of the type of agreement that you need to have. And it's the one that I recommend the most strongly and I recommend it um, right out the gate for business, successful businesses that have a clear path, are revenue generating and have a clear path for more revenue. Uh, because the more money that is involved in your business, the more complicated things are gonna get, unfortunately, um, particularly when you have multiple shareholders involved. So a shareholders agreement is very important to get, um, but you also wanna make sure that you have very clear agreements with your employees, with your contractors, uh, with your clients, with your suppliers, everybody that is touching your business. Um, so you might have licensing agreements. So that's, that's a very important one to, to consider. If you have some intellectual property or perhaps a product or a service that you are white labeling, then you're gonna to wanna to think about getting a proper licensing agreement in place. There are many, many um, nuances and aspects to how licensing agreements can be formed. So um, again, just the, the point that I really would just wanna drive home is get clear and get it in writing. Uh, the amount of cash that you're gonna be spending on getting these cash and time that you're gonna be spending on getting uh, that kind of clarity inside of your business is gonna be a long-term investment that's gonna serve you very, very well, uh, not only for the safety of your business, but also the success of your business, because the more clarity that you have inside of your business, uh, the more likely you are to succeed, because you will know what you're doing, you will know what you stand for, and you will feel the security of having a strong legal foundation. So if you have any questions about any of the topics that I've covered today, please don't hesitate to drop a comment, or you can reach out and contact me directly. Hope you have a great day.